so um, our lectures are boring. Lectures don't work. My daughter here says to me, or used to say to me, Daddy, don't lecture me. And I go, honey, that's what I do for a living. I'm sorry. Um, you know, um, uh, Eric Mazur, I did a talk at uh, Harvard on Zoom uh, last week. Um, Eric Mazur at Harvard has extensively spoken about how EEG activities during a lecture, they're basically flatline. You're actually more alive when you're sleeping sometimes than lecturing. We don't, the, the approach is not cognitively friendly. And the people who do well in that, uh, we say, okay, you're a winner. Now, it doesn't mean they're not a winner. They're very good. But there are a lot of people who do well uh, if, they made, if they're given an option, if they're made curious. Um, if you give them the op opportunity to really master something rather than settle for, you know, just doing well in the exam without mastery. I mean, that was my issue personally. If I didn't master it, I just lost interest, you know? And so instead we just sort of put them through the ringer and we say, you know, we winnow it and say, okay, you made it, you didn't, sorry, next step. So I think we have a real opportunity here uh, with online learning, with personalized learning, with uh, all the affordances that are available to us and especially post COVID to go, when we go back to the classroom, not to fall into the trap that we were in before the uh, before COVID. It'll be very tragic if we go back to Zoom lectures done in person and exams done as we did before and this winnowing approach to education rather than a fundamental human transformation approach where every individual is given an opportunity to truly prove their worth. And I happen to be a romantic and I believe the talent is diverse and it's spread out and we need to change the system so that we can recognize each and every one of it and make it better. Agreed. And, and to your point about the tests uh, and the way we do them, forgetting starts right after the test ends, right? And That's mastery right. really usually begins at work. And it seems like we have this approach of schools as gas stations where I get gasoline to take me to my destination of retirement, as opposed to seeing gasoline as actually oxygen that I need all the time to flourish because jobs are unpredictable. So uh, our schools, the way, the way you see them now, including higher ed, a cramming exercise where we're pounding uh, students with all this content, assuming they're packed in the car and ready to go. Would you change that at all? Oh my God, 100%. I mean, you used a more elegant metaphor uh, than I would. I think of um, schooling and cramming as a hot dog eating contest. The gentleman who won many hot dog eating contests was a very trim uh, Japanese gentleman. His name was I think, Kobayashi. He didn't put on weight because you know what happens the next day, right? He regurgitates it. And the, we, all the research shows us that if you immerse yourself, you learn slowly, you give yourself a chance to forget. And just as you're forgetting, you relearn it. And there's cognitive scientific, neuroscientific principles behind it. It's called space retrieval. There's a testing effect. There's interleaving, interleaving, you apply it all. It is not compatible with the way we teach today. But if we did it right, actually, your long-term winnings, uh, your long-term learning is much better. Retention is better. And um, from a learning perspective, you actually put on weight. You know, I mean, I'll leave you with this thought. We, I think our system is designed truly for a one and done sort of thing. You get your uh, bachelor's and you're done for life, Right. Uh, and that bachelor's degree, if it's a great school like Yale, gets you to your next job and your next job. But we're moving to a gig economy. because, And in the gig economy, you're only as good as your last gig and how you were, did there. The fact that you graduated from Yale doesn't matter if you're in your fourth gig. It's the number of stars you got on your third gig. And so we have to go from the sort of proxy degree check mark to true authentic learning. And that transformation... Um, is uh, going to go hand in hand, I think, with thinking through all the cognitive psychology and thinking through why we teach and, and mastery so that people can actually prove themselves time and again.